Hello and welcome to round, oh, pre-round uh, nine uh, edition of the uh, Bentley a, a Cricket Show. I've got myself Adam Kane and Adam Milkerson. How are you? Good, good to be here. That's good. Are you all excited about the big 2020 day on Sunday? I am actually. Um, look, and if anyone doesn't know, it's it's obviously a battle of Glen Eyre. I think we're named and it's uh, inclusive of us. West Bentley, Washington Park and Bentley United and um, you know obviously those guys have been promoting it hard at their end as well so it should be a great day for the club and um, for the competition. Yeah and a thousand dollars to the winning club uh, where we'll, there'll be two preliminary games in the morning uh, and the winner of those two games play in the final and the winner of that final collects a thousand bucks and bragging rights to be the inaugural winner of the Glen Ira Shield. Yeah so hopefully um, a, we get a good turnout from uh, the respective teams, but also from uh, the other clubs in the uh, CM Stash. It's, it's going to be 32, I think. It's going to be a hot day. It's going to be so. Yeah, there'll be a fair bit of um, you know socialising going on. Yes, a lot of networking within the CMCA, as uh, the CMCA is known for. Like everyone knows each other, so uh, there'll be plenty of discussions over a beer or a daiquiri. A daiquiri, strawberry, and uh, what do we get? Fruit, Fruit tingle. tingle. <laughs> So the old, what was it, it's, um, place on Chapel Street? Frost oh, Frostbites, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm sure we'll see some scenes uh, reminiscent of that. So. Oh, wouldn't like 2 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Righto. All right, so we'll move on to cricket. And um, unfortunately uh, for Bentley a a we uh, lost to uh, LePage Park, falling 10 runs short. Um, Adam Mickelson, your top scorer with 47, along with James White, who scored 36. And uh, Joel Gerber made, made 42 yeah. off uh, not many balls. Joel, uh, I guess he's uh, he plays that role well, where he somewhat plays the aggressor at number four. Yeah, but um, look, Joel gets to 40 off 30 balls, so um, hopefully he can start pulling back a bit and just trying to turn those 40s into 50s and 60s, and then Maybe hopefully um, get his maiden century in, uh, in Longy. But um, yeah, he hit the ball well, and um, James White batted equally as good. And um, yeah, it's just a shame that um, A will chase him 200. And, uh, be that um, we fell 10 runs short. Brad Lovell continues to do well with the ball. He did, he did, he just bowls a good line. He's probably got the best um, change ups in the club mm -hmm. by far, and um, yeah, he, he bowls good lengths. It, uh, Bryce Jans bowled well again, and Tim Caddison actually uh, probably bowled the best of the year as well. And unfortunately, uh, you were run out, which uh, changed the, uh, oh. the tide of the game. Yeah, it never helps when you get run out, and um, especially when Luke and I had. had Put in the hard yards and we had the game where we wanted it. I think we only needed probably 50 off 30 odd balls and we were going at about eight or nine and over as well. So um, we had it where we wanted it, but you know, these things happen and hopefully Luke learns from the experience. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> if he doesn't learn from the experience, he'll definitely learn as to uh, how he plays poker on uh, Sunday night where we've got our uh, poker night and Luke is a uh, early favourite to uh, win that. In uh, Wilno Shield, uh, Bentley a and lost to um, Rabin West, who were second on the ladder in uh, Wilno Shield. Um, you're never uh, in the game when you're chasing 256 after bowling, and um, even though we uh, didn't do too badly with the ball, uh, the fielding uh, in the twos uh, needs to uh, improve dramatically. I put my hand up, I dropped uh, Darren McConville when he was on about 10, and he went on to make 80. So, Were you uh, in the gully? Yeah, in Gully. Uh, it was, it's your uh, spot too. It's your spot. Yeah, look, absolutely. I'm uh, expecting to take those, so no excuses. So, Especially as a senior player of the team. Oh, look, I, I, let, I let people <laughs> down, yeah. So, you know, leadership wasn't there. No. Anyway, so uh, we, we made a good fist of it. We uh, chased and made 217. Um, a lot of starts, but no one got on with it. Uh, Marshy, again, top scored with 45. Uh, he opened with uh, James Fergus, otherwise known as Fergalicious. Um, he uh, made 31 opening as well. And uh, myself coming in at three made 41, but uh, after that it, it pretty much dropped off. And when you're chasing two, what, 50 or 38 overs, you need someone to get a big ton there. Well, if you've got those top three who probably mm -hmm. bat the need majority of the overs, overs, one of them had to yeah. go on with it, and uh, we didn't do that, unfortunately. On a more positive note, C uh, D Gray, our uh, third 11, uh, made uh, eight for 199, with Simon White making his third score in a row. After a couple of 60s, he's uh, made 89, and uh, I believe he was given out LBW when he might have hit it. But uh, anyway, Sammy Wolf uh, went down uh, into the threes to uh, captain the team, and uh, he made 58. So uh, Sammy Wolf is in that position where he uh, sneaks into qualification and uh, plays in finals, which uh, is his forte. Um, 
and uh, in defending uh, 199, Kingston Heath uh, fell short at 182, and uh, the Bart man, Andrew Staines, who's doing it with the bat and ball, uh, took three for 30. So well done to the monster. Mm. And Tommy Fitzpatrick as well, took three for 35. He's, uh, he's uh, doing well this season as an all-rounder also. And in E grade, oh, well, just on that, I think the uh, third's now second or third on the ladder. So they're starting to build a bit of a gap between uh, the finals and uh, fifth spot. So they've only, only lost one game. They've only lost one game. Yeah, yeah, there was a draw, uh, a tie, I should tie, say. Yeah. Um, but that that lost game, uh, that was when there was the real dream team when you had mm. all the all the, the star started lineup, and um, after rolling them for rolling the opposition for one fifty, we we were all out for ninety in like twenty five overs. So they've learned from that, hopefully, and uh, makes a, make a stronger fisting against um, against those boys uh, come finals time. Speaking of uh, winning games, uh, our fourth eleven. Uh, have not lost a game this season, and uh, they're sitting pretty on top of the E-grade ladder, um, making nine for two ten. With uh, Des Falcon are making thirty-four, Al Richardson making thirty-two, and uh, Barry Macefield making Bad his Bears. return for the uh, for the club, making thirty not out. Uh, we made nine for two ten, and uh, LePage Park were never close. Des Falcon, are, uh, well, they were all out for one thirty-nine. With uh, Desi just throwing the nude nuts out there, taking four for thirty. And uh, Robbie Lawford as well, taking three for twenty-five. They actually played on uh, with the pages of the ground behind the um, the grandstand. We actually played on the main ground, but um, yeah, just watching a bit of it um, when we had a break. Um, you know, they're a very confident team, well led, and um, yeah, there's a lot of purpose about the uh, the force. So you know, there's no reason why they can't go the way, especially with uh, Barry Macefield slipping into the uh, the yeah. fold this late in the season. I mean, you've got a lot of experienced players there. You've got Bob Dolman, you've got Rob Lawford, you've got the two Richardsons. And now with Barry in there, that uh, that adds some uh, some quality. Desi well. Falcon it must Des, be yeah. a um, a Monty again for the bowling average. He just keeps getting wickets for low runs. So yeah. um, you know, and he's only had about mix. two or three hits this year, and he's made two fifty. So uh, going well the fourths, uh, the fifths in F grade. Um, thought they actually uh, were in a good show, making five for two thirteen with Brett Arnfield making sixty six. Brad Gilder playing his first game for the club, making 32, I would imagine off not many balls, and Mark Hawthorne making 32 as well. Um, but unfortunately, uh, Bentley United passed them three down with a few overs to go. So, uh, not much to uh, go home to there. Um, but, uh, oh, well, five or two, 13 is a good score. And um, look, the fifths, the fifths are, I think the majority of their season has been so close, but uh, missing out most games. So, uh, it's unfortunate, but, um, had they won that game, there would have still been a chance of finals. But uh, I think that is over. And uh, in the sixth, I grade. Um, eight for one, oh sorry, Bentley A and A all out for 98, um, which was terrible. But uh, they, they really uh, kept themselves in the game. And um, I think uh, looking at the scorecard, they were seven for 90, 93 at one stage. And, and the previous, 12 overs that only made 10 runs. So the pressure was really on. And then the skipper, Mick Wheeler, put himself on and uh, 15 runs hit off the over game over. So uh, that uh, that was unfortunately the uh, end result, but he did take a wicket, Michael Wheeler, so he'll be chirping about that. Um, and finally, in the one day grade, uh, Bentley a a played Hampton Central. And a uh, a batted first, made 165. And with three overs to go, they're actually uh, eight for 109. And then uh, our new recruit, Shane Valenti, who plays for Melbourne Football Club, he came in and hit 46 runs off 14 balls and uh, gave us a competitive score of 165. Did you get his order? <laughs> no, 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 but we did try to recruit him for uh, 2020 on Sunday mm. and uh, unfortunately he's unavailable. But um, he also took uh, three for 32 with the ball. And the other, the other performer for the day was uh, Stephen Payne, who uh, also played his first game for the club and he made 38 not out. Um, but yeah, Hampton Central passed us in the last over, so um, tight game, but um, yeah, it was uh, unfortunately another loss. And the skipper Nick Kane uh, made his high score for the season, making 17, so he's in uh, positive territory and Dream Team points finally this season. Just seen that, Ken McGregor, 127. Is he playing? He's just playing Hampton Central in uh, G grade, H grade even, so uh, yeah. Who knows, he's uh, maybe just it's his first game back for the it's year. Considering their ones haven't won a game, he's, unless he's just come back or something, I don't know. Maybe he had a wedding no. to go to, who knows. Um, 
And just quickly on the juniors, the under-16s are uh, 